Hi everyone, my name is Mark Buncombe and together with a fantastic team across the continent, we look after the mining business for Sanabank. I'm going to touch on three subjects, ESG, supply chains and the energy transition. So ESG is a big thematic. In the last two or three years, everybody involved in this industry has a much better understanding of carbon emissions. So how do I think this will evolve? A lot of the other things around emissions uh, will come to the fore. Decentralized energy is a fantastic example, particularly down here in South Africa. Taking that off-grid in a decentralized way obviously reduces your emissions, but actually boards are thinking about this in terms of security of supply. We don't have enough uh, electricity to go around, and so it's not just driven by carbon emissions. So you've got this confluence of activities. The second thing we're seeing is the market itself is adjusting. So what we're seeing now is premiums for certain commodities that are produced with a low emissions uh, standard. The third piece that I think is important in ESG is recycling. More and more, our miners are going downstream into recycling business. So fines, hydro, sorting technology, we think all of those you know, will become much more prevalent. And then the other thing I think that will evolve on ESG is we're gonna move away from a carbon only discussion. Our investors are very concerned about governance. It's something we need to respond to and our, and our clients need to respond to. The last piece, if you ask the miners themselves, they're gonna say it's the S component. And not only safety, but the communities in which you operate and uh, effectively the license uh, to operate uh, you know, within those countries. The next big thematic is energy transition. The question is, how do we move towards a lower carbon energy intensive uh, environment? When you think about energy transition, you're thinking about it in terms of generation, in terms of storage, and in terms of transition. And behind all of that is the question, which minerals will drive that energy transition? Now, it's very easy to think about it in the terms of batteries, and that will drive demand and prices for things like lithium, vanadium, cobalt, graphite. That's true for manganese, it's true for nickel, it's true for tin on the energy storage side. And on the generation side, one requires slightly different commodities. But out of all of that potentially comes a whole new demand source for the platinum industry. And then the piece that's often overlooked is the transmission side. How do you move energy source that's produced from some sort of renewable form? That's the old traditional materials, copper, aluminium, so there's a massive increase in demand as the whole economy moves away from energy intensive sources into a, a lower carbon type of environment. So how do our clients think about this? It is the one topic that drives corporate activity and M&A. And so what's tending to happen is, is a lot of these industries that aren't perfectly placed for the new energy transition are using their income in order to best position themselves for the energy transition going forward. The last important topic for the mining industry this year will revolve around supply chains and the logistics of getting your, your products out to market. DRC, for example, copper production will double in the next 18 months. Infrastructure is already constrained. You've got significant queues at border posts. There aren't enough trucks. There's going to be a massive infrastructure requirement in order to cope with the, the future production coming out of DRC. The more time I spend around you know, this industry, the more I realize just how complex it's getting. Those miners look at us as their bankers, and their expectations of us is to adjust and adapt and support them as they manage all of these very complex parts of their business. 